Welcome to our lecture online. Let's try the next set of examples to see how we solve equations when we have fractions and decimals and parentheses all in one. All right, let's take a look at the one on the right. We have fractions. We want to get rid of those fractions. Notice that the largest denominator is the common denominator of the two fractions here, which means the LCD is equal to 4. That means we must multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. Like so. Now when we multiply, we use a distributive property, so we're going to multiply the 4 times the first term and the second term. Same on this side, we're going to multiply these together. So 4 times 3x over 2. The best way to do that is to say 2 goes into 4 2 times. 2 times 3x gives me a 6x. 4 times minus x is a minus 4x is equal to here 1 quarter times 4 that gives me 1 plus 2 times 4 that gives me 8. Now you can see that on the left side we only have terms with the x on the right side we only have numbers so we can combine those two 6, 6x minus 4x is 2x 1 plus 8 is 9 and now we divide both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient the 2's cancel out x is equal to 9 divided by 2. On the left side, we have parentheses, we have decimals, we don't have fractions. Okay, we just have decimals and parentheses. Now notice that this is a single term because these are multiplied together. This is a single term and this is a single term, which means we can look at those three terms and each of them has a decimal with one decimal place, one decimal place, and one decimal place. Actually, those are two terms. I'll take that back. Here's a term right here, and there's a term right there. This, this one does not have a decimal place, but this one does. But the largest number of decimals is 1, which means we can multiply both sides of the equation by 10. So we're going to multiply the right side by 10, and we're going to multiply the left side by 10. Notice I only have to multiply the 10 by the factor of what's inside the parentheses here. So I'm not, taking, I'm not taking care of the parentheses first. I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of the decimals. Which means in this case, I end up with 2 times x minus 60, because 0.2 is the factor of x minus 60, plus 10 times this gives me simply x equals 16 times 10 is 160, and 0.4 times 10 is 4 with the negative makes it a minus 4. Now I can go ahead and take care of the parentheses. I'm going to multiply the 2 times the 2 quantities inside the parentheses. So 2 times x is 2x and 2 times the negative 60 is a minus 120. Plus x is equal to 160 minus 4. Next I want all the terms with the x on the left side. They're already there. But the term here that doesn't have an x needs to move to the right side. So it gives me 2x plus x is equal to 160 minus 4, and the minus 120 becomes plus 120. When I combine like terms, I end up with 3x is equal to 160 plus 120, that's 280, minus 4 is 276. Now I'm wondering if this number is divisible by 3. So I add up all the digits. 2 plus 7 is 9 plus 6 is 15. So 2 plus 7 plus 6 is equal to 15. I take the number 15 and add the 1 plus 5. So 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. And sure enough, since 6 is divisible by 3, 276 must be divisible by 3 as well. So when I divide both sides by 3, I end up with x is equal to 3 goes into 27 9 times, and 3 goes into 6 2 times, so x equals 92 is the solution for that. And so that's how we take care of those two types of, of uh, and that's how we take care of those two types of linear equations.